Good day everyone, our group will discuss the equity plan for Commonwealth Avenue which is in QC District 2. For our site background, the first map shows the intensity level of lively spaces versus dead spaces in the avenue. So when a street or space is tagged as a dead space, it means that it doesn't have its own characteristics and lacks interaction to its users and environment, such as the lack of signages, wayfinders, greeneries, and the likes. And so the dark violet spots shows that there are observed dead spaces present commonly in the avenue. Since Commonwealth is a long stretch, we will be focusing on the boundaries of District 2, which is from Commonwealth Batasan to Commonwealth Don Fabian. And according to the data based on 2020, since Commonwealth has a land area of 171 square kilometers with a population of 2,096,000, its population density is at around 17,000 inhabitants per square kilometers. A little bit of background of Commonwealth Avenue is that it developed as a major thoroughfare during the 1950s and the peak of its central hub for trade was during 2004. Throughout the years, infrastructure development was established in the area, like the MRT Line 7 project. And since Commonwealth became the route of many commuters and vehicles, accidents were inevitable in the area primarily due to poor planning, like there are no spaces for pedestrian and the strict implementation of regulations for vehicles. Thus, the avenue was nicknamed as the Philippines Killer Highway. These are the major issues seen in the avenue. First, despite being a major thoroughfare, it lacks identity, which leads to it being empty and dull. The footbridges are too rigid and does not accommodate PWDs and seniors. Some parts are congested due to the informal vendors on the streets. And lastly is that... So the main problem we are trying to fix is the circulation within Commonwealth. We are trying to address the congestion within the flow of pedestrians, the infrastructure they use, and as well as the systems which slow down and make commuting difficult. So the area presents uh, significant challenges in terms of safety and accessibility as said, and um, the highly accident-prone environment poses a risk to commuters, vendors, and passerby due to wide roads, high-speed vehicles, and hazardous placements of vendors along the roadside. So the lack of ramps and elevators on uh, footbridges severely limits accessibility for um, people with disability uh, elderly and those with stro strollers. So as we undermine safe passage across the highway, uh, the public spaces suffer from it inadequate security and safety measures to further uh, ex exacerbate uh, these issues. So the current urban landscape lacks sufficient room for cultural venues and green spaces, with every inch of space occupied by vendors and marketplaces, leaving little to no area for recreation and integration of vegetation and greenery. While these multiple transport options such as jeepneys, buses, and UV expresses um, add to the congestion of the area. We aim to make use of the elevation of structures and the prominence of footbridges to connect these paths of circulation with, with each other, having seamless flow of pedestrians. Next, we have the rationale for the project site's need for planning intervention. Commonwealth Avenue has become a huge social intersection for not just people, but also vehicles. With its abundance of people, lanes, and concrete infrastructures and more developments, its planning and management has not caught up to its fast urbanization. Dead spaces have emerged, pedestrian layouts are chaotic, and vehicles do not even bother to follow their respective lane due to the wide road. With a well-thought and efficient planning intervention, we aim to utilize the area to fully accommodate people and cars, to allow the space to function without all the disorder, to allow the space to be livable, accessible, and connected. Now we proceed to identifying the planning outcomes of our site. Social equity in urban design means recognizing differences and providing resources based on individual needs to achieve equal outcomes. So in making Commonwealth Avenue a more livable space, there should be a balance between vehicular access and pedestrian comfort. So navigating the area should be efficient, creating urban spaces that promote physical and mental health, 
accessible community facilities, and public transportation efficiency, which also includes transits and designated lanes for vehicles. So these interventions will be further explained on the following slides. We have five descriptors that make up our vision reality gap matrix. First one being diverse. Diversity is successfully attained when all the people are safe and comfortable walking along and across the street, a contrast to its reality being a highly accident-prone area for the commuters, vendors, and passers-by. We rated diversity as zero, nothing has been achieved. Second, inclusivity is successfully attained when there is ease of access for people of all abilities. Today, this has not been achieved as footbridges are not integrated with PWD-friendly measures and considerations for the elderly and pregnant women. As all types of people are not able to cross the avenue safely, we rated this a zero. Third, a just place makes public areas secure and livable for the community. Road lanes help ease traffic flow, and vendors have designated places along the area that are safe yet also accessible. Unlike the reality that is that public spaces lack security and safety, the excessive wide road and fast vehicles add the accident-prone area factor, and vendors sell on the roadside in unsanitary and unsafe conditions, fitting the rate of one. Fourth, the vibrancy of a place is successfully achieved by incorporating cultural venues and outlets that help define the place and increase appreciation of the community for the place. Parks and green spaces also affect the vibrancy as it adds a sense of vitality and liveliness. In contrast, the place has little to no room for cultural venues and outlets. Only micro-enterprises compressed in the concrete field development, befitting a rate of 1.5. Lastly, a place is successfully accessible when there is availability of transportation to the area and that there is enough parking spaces to accommodate the people and their vehicles. While it is true that there are plenty of transportation options available to the area, there is however insufficient parking spaces. The use of a road lane to act as parking spaces because of its lack thereof made its rating a 2.5 from our group. Completing the VRG matrix allowed us to discover the priority of key outcome of interests of the project. All descriptors are relatively low, but seeing as diversity and inclusivity are rated zero, they will be of the highest priority, followed by justness, vibrancy, and then accessibility. So here is our vision statement. Transforming Commonwealth Barangay into an accessible, connected, and livable urban community. The vision for Commonwealth Barangay is to create an urban environment that is accessible, connected, and livable, prioritizing the well-being of its residents. The project envisions a community with enhanced infrastructure that supports sustainable transportation, inclusive public spaces, and the vibrant local community by integrating innovative design and planning solutions. The project aims to foster a resilient and cohesive community that can thrive amidst the challenges of urbanization. So, we would like to propose a goal is to establish Commonwealth Barangay as a benchmark for urban accessibility, connectivity, and livability by improving its infrastructure, promoting sustainable transport, and enhancing the public spaces. So here is our objectives is to improve urban mobility, to reroute road schemes, to optimize traffic flow based on vehicle type, private, public, motorcycle, and bicycle, and enhance transportation infrastructure to ensure safe and efficient movement within the barangay. Enhance accessibility in terms of develop unified and PWD friendly food bridges and wayfinding systems to improve pedestrian connectivity and accessibility for all residences and promote environmental sustainability by implementing green infrastructure and encouraging sustainable practice to reduce environmental impact of urban development and to foster economic vitality by just supporting local business and markets to stimulate economic and provide empl employment opportunities within the barangay. And lastly, is to strengthen the public spaces by designing and developing a multifunctional public space that cater to the recreational, cultural, and social needs of the community. So here is just a list of review of best practices, such as the unified pedestrian infrastructure, Singapore's network covered walkways, and pedestrian-friendly footbridges. And here we would like to apply this um, project in connected to unified footbridges in Commonwealth Barangay, designed to be accessible to the persons with disability, PWDs, and integrated wayfinding systems for an easy navigation. Second is rerouting and traffic management. 
which is located in Seoul, South Korea's smart traffic management system. And this would like to um, develop in rerouting scheme in Commonwealth Barangay that categorize roads based on its vehicle type, reducing congestion, improving traffic flow for all users. And third is sustainable transport solutions, Copenhagen bike-friendly urban design, which is also applied in our project, developing a dedicated bike lanes and improved infrastructure to encourage the use of bicycle as a sustainable mode of transportation within the barangay and lastly local economic hubs night markets and community bazaars in taipei to establish local markets and business hubs that supports the community so here is our policies and programs we would like to include here the urban mobility and traffic management by integrating and rerouting scheme that categorize roads based on the vehicle type, private, public, motorcycle, and bicycle to optimize traffic flow and reduce congestion. Second is pedestrian infrastructure enhancement, standardized design of footbridges ensure they are PWD friendly, incorporating ramps, elevators, and tactile paving. Public spaces development, such as encouraging the inclusion of green infrastructure in public spaces, such as urban gardens, tree-lined walkways to promote environmental sustainability. And lastly, is economic development initiatives. It's a launch program that supports local entrepreneurs and small businesses, providing training, microfinance options, and access to market spaces. So here is our proposed project. First, the unified footbridges and wayfinding system is to design and construct a series of interconnected footbridges across Commonwealth Barangay, ensuring that they are PWD friendly equipped with their wayfinding signage. Second is traffic rerouting and management by implementing our traffic management project that reroutes roads based on their vehicle type, incorporating smart traffic signals and monitoring system to optimize the flow. Third is green public spaces development, identifying and develop underutilized spaces into green public parks and recreational areas, integrating sustainable features like rainwater harvesting and solar lighting. And next would be the sustainable transportation infrastructure, develop bike lanes and improve pedestrian pathways to encourage sustainable transportation options within the barangay, reducing resilience on the private vehicles. Overall, transforming Commonwealth Avenue into a livable space necessitates a comprehensive approach by implementing and enforcing traffic regulations, improving infrastructures, and engaging the community, it is possible to significantly reduce accidents and create a safer, more livable environment. Promoting sustainable transportation options will further contribute to the traffic congestion and enhancing the overall quality of life for residents and commuters.